well they'll come fast and furious now and the expectations are as high as ever in Zagville. Welcome to Spokane Washington the Gonzaga Bulldogs ready to host the Idaho Vandals out of the Western Athletic Conference Gonzaga well frankly this is one of the hardest if not the hardest place to play in the entire country Gonzaga 53 and 2 in this building and they've defeated Idaho 12 out of their last 13 meetings Greg Heister and Craig Elo and before we start talking about tonight, Craig, let's jump back to Saturday. Kind of a tale of two halves for Gonzaga. It really was. Uh, the first half ended on a bad note for Gonzaga's defense, but in the second half, they really came out and cowboyed up. It was great defense, and it led to a lot of offense. A block shot by Josh Heifelt led to a transition. Matt Bolden playing shadow defense, and then Stephen Gray reading the scouting report, knowing the play, steals the ball and comes home for a slam dunk. So the defense really shored up and got Gonzaga going in the second half. Now Austin Day has had a lot of nice games in his early Gonzaga career, but oh my, does he love season openers. Oh, no kidding. Last year, he launched his career with a double-double. And again this year against Montana State University Billings, he comes out and has another double-double to start the season. You add that with one in the middle of the year last year, Austin Day's doing great. But I tell you what I like best in that, that highlight you saw right there, this young man can block shots and he's gonna lead this team in block shots. Wow, is it getting loud in here? Idaho, they begin a new era, new coach. They bring in 12 new players, and Craig, anytime that happens, it's going to take some time. It really is. The Don Berlin era has begun in Idaho, and he's fortunate that he's got a good little point guard in Mac Hobson, a transfer from Washington State. Mac goes over to Idaho, where his dad, Phil Hobson, was a great player, and Mac can really play. He's a good little ball handler, primary ball handler, so the ball will be in his hands most of the time. Loves to drive to the basket. There's one layup. Got a little hurt on that, but oops, what happens again? Here he goes again on a drive. Gets there, same reaction. Look, out. But the best thing is he saw him finish both of those shots. Now, quite frankly, this is the final warm-up for Gonzaga. They've got to play well tonight because the real season begins next during the Thanksgiving break when they play Oklahoma State and then either Michigan State or Maryland. We'll get you tonight's starting lineups and the tip-off when we come back. The Gonzaga Bulldogs tipped off the 08-09 season with a victory, but it wasn't easy. Montana State Billings Mike Hall caught fire late in the first half and had the Yellow Jackets buzzing, down only five at the half. But in the second half, the Zags began swatting the pesky bees, sharing the rock, and finding their stroke. Tonight, the Idaho Vandals visit the kennel, looking to steal some of the Bulldog thunder. It's Gonzaga and Idaho, and it's next. And welcome inside the McCarthy Athletic Center in Spokane, Washington for Gonzaga and the University of Idaho. I'm Greg Heister along with Craig Elo. The Zags winning their season opener over the weekend against Montana State Billings. Idaho 1-1, one one, a win against Evergreen, a loss against Michigan State. And we take a look at the Idaho Vandal starters. Mac Hobson, the guard. Craig highlighted him in the pregame. Trevor Morris, Kashif Watson, Luis Augusto, and Brandon Wiley. The head coach, Don Verlin, in his uh, first season. And of course, uh, his record now at one and one. But uh, for their second game in the road, they're on the road against one of the best teams in the nation. So they're up against it here tonight at Gonzaga. The starters for the Zags. Of course, they're led by their point guard, Jeremy Pargo, the reigning West Coast Conference Player of the Year. Matt Bolden and Micah Downs getting the start at the guards. Heitfeld the center and Austin Day, the very talented sophomore forward for Mark Few, now in his 10th season at the, as the head coach at Gonzaga. And his numbers now getting quite gaudy. He's third all time in wins here at GU and it, he'll be climbing that list very shortly with 237 wins. And Craig, we did talk about the tale of two halves on Saturday night for Mark Few and his Gonzaga Bulldogs. I'm sure that the coaches are going to want a better start to this game than what they saw. And remind the guys, look, if you're truly a top 10 team, 
those things don't happen to, to great teams. Right, and I think the turnovers were the big problem in the first half. Ten turnovers, and Gonzaga just got to realize they got to value the ball a little bit more on each possession and make sure they get shots at the rim, and that's what they worked on the last two days in practice. And they win the opening tip. Cargo with it. That's Matt Bolden on the far side, guarded by Watson. Heitfeldt will shoot it from out there from time to time. Day wanting it, and he gets it on the post. Drives for the baseline to Zip Gonzaga. <laughs> that was a great offensive set. Just like we talked about in the last game, we thought that they should move the ball around a little bit more. The ball went from one side of the floor to the other, and then the Zags took advantage of Austin Day's height against Wiley down on the post, and you saw the result, Austin Day basket. There's Hobson, number one, transfer from Washington State. To Watson driving on Bolden wild shot up no good defense was good there and Pargo with it far side Gonzaga and, and that's the other thing if the Zags want to be a good top 10 team they got to play defense on every possession they got to play a full 40 minutes on the defensive end Dave three ball drops that through five nothing Gonzaga and there you see the versatility of Austin Day as we take a look what these two schools have done over the years Idaho actually leads the all-time series but Gonzaga has won the last eight and 12 of 13. But when you can go to the post to Austin Day at 6'10", he's going to shoot over any other four in the nation at that size. And But he also has the skill to pop outside and hit the three ball. Yeah, and that was well beyond the new college three-point line. He had a foot behind it. Morris for Idaho. That shot is off. Micah Downs. Here's Heitfeld on the post. Backing in. Shot away, draws the foul, free throws coming. And we talked about it the other night, uh, the Saturday night game against uh, Montana State University Billings, where we thought they were rushing shots. They probably could have made a few extra passes, and that was, uh, uh, you know, that was brought up at practice about making a couple extra passes, make the defense work a little bit more, and you'll get a better shot than what they were taking. And right there, you saw another possession with Josh Heifel getting the ball in the post. Foul on Luis Augusto, our first of the game. All right, let's take a look at Craig's eggs now, the keys to the game. Well, this is the first and foremost. This was addressed at practice uh, just the other day. Established the inside-out game, and we saw it first possession with Austin Day on the post, and now you saw it with Josh Heifelt going to the post. If you can establish the inside game first, the perimeter will be opened up. The second one is what I said earlier, solid D for 40 minutes. Take no possessions off on the defensive end. And then the last one is always offensive efficiency. Limit your turnovers, value the possessions, and get shots at the rim every time down. Not a good start for Idaho. They missed their first two shots of the game. Gonzaga with a 5-0 lead and the shot by down. Pure from the corner. It's 8-0. And Gonzaga's a perfect three for three. And a timeout, Idaho. I think Coach Berlin had seen enough. Some pretty good offense by the Zags. A nice skip pass by Josh Heifelt to Micah Downs, who has range over there in the corner in front of the Idaho bench and drills the three in a nice 30-second timeout by Verlin to settle his team down and try to get them to do something on the offensive end where they get a better look and get off of the egg. And Craig Austin Day, Saturday night, 15 points, 12 rebounds. Off to another tremendous start tonight. Two of two shooting, he's got five points. But again, it's the versatility at 6'10 that he brings to this court for Gonzaga. No question in there, another shot blocked by him. I don't know if they credit it with him, but yeah. And then there's the other thing, you bring him inside, now you take him outside, he'll shoot right over you, and he has range also on his jumper. And Day not credited for that block as of yet. Maybe it looked like a good block. It did. We'll have to wait and see if the final score will give him that that block. 54 a year ago as a freshman. So, so let's see what Idaho can do now coming off this timeout. There's a deflection. Nice defense forced him right down to the baseline to the double team. Argo knifing through the middle. And two more. Ten zip Gonzaga. I like that play by Jeremy Pargo. He didn't get out of control. He was in control the whole way down with the basketball. Saw a little seam in the defense and went for it. And then, you know, as well as I do what he does in there. And the steal by Micah Downs. Can he finish? Bang! Steal. I guess he can. Can he finish? Did you see that? Oh! -ho. 
And now the pressure. You can hear the crowd. And we've got a foul away from the basketball. Well, I will say this. Don Verlin was a, a assistant coach for Stu Merle, who, by the way, was a 1974 graduate of Gonzaga University, 11 at Utah State, and uh, four at Northern Colorado. And the whole story on those two guys or that whole system is discipline. And uh, so far, Idaho has been a little bit rattled and taken out of that discipline attack on the offensive end caused by defense on the Zags part. That foul called on uh, Trevor Morris, his first team second. Ball out of bounds. It goes to Idaho. Well, if Austin Day needs to work on something in his game, <laughs> it might be the high-low pass. That's a signature move, bread and butter for the Zags. And Josh Heifeld had his man locked and sealed in the lane. Austin Day's got to find a way to get that ball to him. And the foul call there on Matt Bolden. And it's obvious uh, in the first three games for Idaho what they really need to work on this year. Gonzaga's off to a perfect start shooting the ball. They're 5 of 5 in their loss to Michigan State. The Spartans shot nearly 60% and they hit 11 three pointers in that game. So Idaho's got to play better defense. They're a really small team. There's no really big center or big forward out there. A lot of uh, guard sized guys. So it's going to be tough on them to challenge, you know, jump shooters unless they're right up in their grill. Hobson drives and a travel call. I thought it was going to be a charge. But Mike Peterson, the head official, says, nope, took too many steps. Turnover. And that's four straight turnovers now for Idaho. As Matt Bolden goes out, Stephen Gray checks in. Well, when they look up, uh, that'd be the Vandals look up at the scoreboard and see themselves 12 and 0. They start forcing things a little bit. And, you know, you got to credit defense uh, on the Zags part also for causing those turnovers. I've seen a lot of good pressure and a lot of good help. Downs missed the shot. Gonzaga's first miss of the game. He was looking for a foul. Here's Wiley with it. Hand off to Brandon Brown of the 22 out of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, the senior. And our first timeout. 15:46 to play first half. Gonzaga off to a 12-zip start. Here's the senior point guard, Jeremy Pargo, going to work. An easy bucket inside. And then the defense. Mike it downs and the big finish. 12-zip Gonzaga. Well, Gonzaga's hit five of their first six shots. The Vandals of Idaho yet to hit one. They're 0 for 3, four turnovers. Needless to say, not a good start for Idaho. <laughs> no, but like we said in, in the uh, eggs keys there was, you know, solid defense. And defense will lead to offense. And if you look, four points off of the Idaho turnovers caused by the defense. Four points, fast break points. So that means the defense was good on the other end. So eight of the uh, Gonzaga's 12 points have come from what their defense has caught. Here's Brown. And we've got a whistle. Offensive foul against Idaho. Big Marvin Jefferson trying to get a screen on the baseline, trying to get a shooter open down there. Micah, Day did a, or Micah Downs did a nice job where he just kind of made himself skinny, chased the man out, and when he chased the man out, Marvin had to step in, and that's an illegal pick. Jefferson's first, team's third, five turnovers now for the Idaho Vandals. They trail number nine, Gonzaga, 12 zip. And here's Heitfeld with it on the post. Square shoots, good. Take what's given. Jefferson didn't step out with Josh on the uh, turnaround look up at the basket and Josh made him pay with a nice jumper. Do you ha really have to be careful though of a 6'11 guy driving by you? You have to pop out on him, right? I would step right when Josh stepped out and faced up. I would have stepped right. You with have him. to. You have to because he's a shooter. He's not a six foot guard that's going to go around. You. Right. And a blocking foul inside on Stephen Gray, his first, team's first. Actually, Gonzaga's second now. Fight, 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 
Gonzaga now six of seven shooting. It's got to be tough for a team like Idaho who just got home. Actually, haven't they haven't been home yet? No. Yeah. They came back from playing this game against Michigan State, number six in the nation, and then they come right back and they got to play number nine on the road. <laughs> so number six and number nine on the road in a matter of a few days. Pargo drive, pick out Gray, three ball, no good. See, that's not a bad shot out of transition though. Good penetration by Pargo, and then a kick out to Gray. Jefferson traveled. And how about the transition back into defense after the mess shot? Pargo penetrated, and who was the first guy back? Jeremy Pargo. That's excellent. If your leader's doing that, then the rest of the guys will follow. And didn't pick up a silly foul. Did you see him not reach in? He knew Marvin was going to have a little trouble down there <laughs> with the dance. Step back. And Jeremy, in the past, would have reached in and tried to slap and steal the ball away, but that time was very smart not reaching in. Down. The three ball from the corner. On Saturday night, Gonzaga took 16 threes in that first half. They made just four. They're three of four in this game. Yeah, 29% on one game, and that's not uh, typical for Gonzaga. They usually get better looks. I just think they rushed a lot of their shots. They were so anxious to play that first game. Brown trying to work on Micah Downs, threw it to Jefferson. He backs inside, little sky hook, no good. Rebound Ira Brown, number 50 in there. Pargo with it near side. Austin Day, another three. Oh, <laughs> Ira Brown as Jefferson mistimed his leap. And the foul call on number 32, Kashif Watson. Micah Downs, perfect from behind the arc, two of two, great form. He, he drifted right down to the corner on Jeremy's couple of penetration dribbles, got himself squared to the rim. Everybody will say ten toes to the rim or your shoulder square to the rim. You usually got a good chance of making it. Micah had both his feet set to the uh, to the rim and also his shoulders. And he's he's as talented as anybody out there on the floor, and he's got to realize that. His feet are set prior to catching the pass. Exactly. In anticipation. And Pargo delivered it right in the shooting pocket where Micah had his hands ready to shoot the basketball. And when you get all that going for you, it's usually a good result. Austin Day driving with the left hand. Went right at Luciano de Sousa that time, number 13. Jefferson inside. Foul called on Stephen Gray. Gray picks up number two. That's three on Gonzaga. And not a bad foul by Stephen Gray. When the big man Marvin Jefferson's that deep in the paint, Stephen you don't want to give up him. easy baskets. You got to make him pay him. Stephen did a nice job of uh, going for the ball. So Idaho still Marvin looking for Jefferson their first the points. And question is, will he get him at the free throw line? Well, Jefferson is uh, not a bad free throw shooter. He's only 33 <laughs> percent. Doesn't show it there though. Yeah, good looking nice shot. Arc. Yeah. The junior out of Merced, California. Gray goes out of the game with those two fouls. Micah Downs checking right back in. And also Dimitri Goodson, number three on the floor for Gonzaga. Jefferson, one of two. Goodson, a freshman out of Spring, Texas. And a good one. 17 to one. Brown inside Austin Day. I think Austin was expecting Ira to shoot it. They give it to Idaho. Much to the chagrin of these fans and Austin Day. So Mark Few going small here, Craig. We'll see some of this this year. A lot of it actually. Well, I think it's a good lineup. I think he's got a lot of choices. And when your leads up, you know, 16 points, you can experiment a little bit with your rotations. And I say that, and Josh Heitfeld's off the bench, ready to check in. And if you notice last possession too, Coach Berlin moved the Vandals into a 2-3 zone. They were getting beat pretty bad on the offense going man-to-man. -man, so now he's going to try to pack it in and make Gonzaga shoot from outside. Brown drives, missed it long. Bolden with the rebound. Bolden running the point. Into the corner, out to Goodson. Here's Day. 
And, and already we're seeing a lot better ball movement on Gonzaga's part. Instead of taking early shots uh, in transition, you're seeing a couple of extra passes being made. Foul called on Austin Day who clipped Hobson as Hobson had turned up the floor and was running to the other end. Day was falling and ran into him. His first personal four on Gonzaga, 17-1. 17-1, Gonzaga off to a great start against the University of Idaho. Jeremy Pargo, the reigning West Coast Conference Player of the Year, now in his senior campaign. He's the consummate leader, both vocal and he leads with actions. He really does. In last year, 33 games, Gonzaga played 14 teams that had burst in the NCAA tournament. In those 14 games, Pargo averaged 15.8 points, 9.3 points a game versus everyone else. So the young man knows when to play in big games. But right now, the two games he's played this year against Montana State University Billings in Idaho, the main thing that I see that he's doing really well is distributing the basketball. 10 assists the other night against Montana State Billings. And De Sousa buries the three-point bomb, 17 to four. De Sousa out of Brazil. Came to Idaho by way of Leveland, Texas, South Plains Junior College. You're getting some sort of kickback from the state if you mention Texas. There is a big, uh, yeah, uh, stipend involved in there. Height fell off the glass too long. Hobson in transition. De Sousa again for three, and he drops in another. So De Sousa, six of ten coming into the game, now eight of 12 on the season from behind the arc. So no surprise that he can shoot from out there. He's got really good form, and he's got good lift on his shot. Look at the legs and the extension and a nice follow through. And not only that, the hairdo's going. And he's brought some energy and a bounce to Idaho since the last time out. Idaho on a 7-0 run now. They climbed to within 10. And here's the 2-3 zone. Some teams run that just strictly out of uh, underneath the basket just to, to make sure there's no easy baskets on the out of bounds. But got to go inside. Yeah, that's too easy. Austin found a nice hole in the right behind the guards on that 2-3 zone and Matt delivered a nice pass to him and again Austin using his height advantage to just turning and shooting on the Vandals. They now with seven points and the foul called on Matt Bolden. That's his second five on Gonzaga. Matt's got a little challenge with the hairdo tonight doesn't he? <laughs> In what way? What do you it's a little messy, but uh, yeah, it's always messy, isn't it? <laughs> it is always messy. That's true. What I was thinking, uh, uh, the guy on uh, Idaho's team, same hairdo. Might be a fashion statement tonight. Luciano de Sousa. It's got uh, a heck of a head of hair. Well, Gonzaga hit their first five and then missed five in a row. That last few goal by Austin Day. Ending that 0 for 5 drought, and it's back to a 10 point game now. Pargo drives to Day. Heitfeld posting up, but Jefferson doing a good job fronting him in there. De Souza went for the steal, and Jefferson had his back. Backside help defensively there. Nice block. Yeah, and you got to do that. If you got a guy as active as Luciano is, then you got to make sure that someone's got your back. And here, big Marvin Jefferson does a nice job getting Austin Day shot. Why is it so hard for kids to buy into playing defense? Right? I think because it's an attitude. You got to have a real attitude, and it's really work out there to play defense. Offense comes naturally, but defense you got to really put your nose down and and get in somebody's grill and, and play it. And uh, sometimes you just you know, take it, take it off on the defensive end. It's a hard thing to teach, I will tell you that, to make someone play defense. Well, Gonzaga now just three of their last 12 from the floor. It's a 10-point game in Idaho with possession. Jefferson flashing through the middle. Hobson driving. Watson. Offensive foul on Kashif Watson. That's number two on him. And that's five on Idaho. 
Well, there's Austin Day. Instead of going for the block, holds his ground. He left his feet, though. Did he? Or did he was he on his like tiptoes? He, I don't know. If we, well, maybe. It's hard to tell, but it sure looked like his feet left the floor to me. Well, I was going to say Dr. Krause Let's take is another be, look. Yeah, he did. He skipped a little bit after uh, Watson had gotten in the air, though. Uh, but that'll be a big, big mark on Dr. Krause's uh, grades for Austin Day taking the charge. Third offensive foul by Idaho. A lot of talking going on out there with the Zags. Fargo just spins, drives, hangs, missed. Heitfeld had it, Downs picks it up, scoop shot, count it, and a chance for three. Well, I was fortunate enough to work with uh, Steve Nash in, uh, in some camps, and, and he said all point guards need to have a solution if you're going to leave your feet. That time it looked like Jeremy had a solution, but it was taken away from him, and he had to throw up a shot. But luckily, when he threw it up, Micah Downs crashed the boards and got the rebound and put it back in. And it should be pointed out that if you're Steve Nash and you're playing in the NBA, if you leave your feet, just throw it up, chances are your teammate's going to go Someone's going to go get it. You're exactly right. <laughs> at this level, we're getting close at Gonzaga uh, to having those caliber of athletes, but not quite there. No, and, and <laughs> there, it's inching there, though. It's pretty darn close. And I thought that was a heck of oh, a great play by him. Austin Day. Day with a lay in. That's why they have him at the point in this zone defense that they're running. He's so long, and if he just gets up and active and pressures the ball, he'll make a lot of deflections. And a timeout, Idaho. And what a coaching ploy by Mark Buda. Change it up, drop into a zone. You've been running man to man pressure up on the uh, Vandals when they bring the ball out. This time you run a couple of zones, and you got Austin Day at the point. Bam. Get a basket, a steal and a basket, and now a timeout by IU. Well, Mark Few certainly has a lot of great depth at guard this year with Stephen Gray and Micah Downs and Jeremy Pargo, Stephen Gray. Micah Downs off to a tremendous start tonight, the senior four of five, 11 points. But I, I think it's really his defense to me that doesn't get noticed enough. No, and if you've got a 6'8 body and the length of Micah Downs and the athletic ability of the young man, defense should be his primary thing. I mean, he's a great offensive player, but defense, he could be someone that you could put on a smaller guy because he's quick enough to guard a smaller guy, but he can also go down and guard a big forward like a four, and we've seen him play four before also. That's a good point for our producer, Chauncey Jones. You know, when you have Day and Heitfeld and Micah Downs on the floor, they're pretty big. That's long. Yeah, you're going to have a tough time getting to the rim against the Zags with that lineup out there. Throw Matt Bolden at the other guard, and he's 6'5 and built like a linebacker. Here's a steal. Day with a jam! When it looked like Idaho was slowly climbing back into this game, starting to do some good things, Gonzaga's erupting again. Well, you got to credit the defense. They did not drop back when they got a lead. They continued to put the pressure up the floor. And so far, they've looked very good on the defensive end, applying pressure 94 feet. Idaho, nine turnovers, and Gonzaga's turned that into 16 points. And now they're really keeping an eye on DeSouza, who hit a couple of threes, four on the shot clock, hops and drives. Left hand off the glass, no good. Rebound, Dave. Outlet near side Pargo. Downs wanting it. Here's Stephen Gray, open three from the wing. That's long. And rebound Terrence Simmons, number three out of Durant, Mississippi. De Sousa left open. He missed that three. His first miss from behind the arc. Now two of three. Heitfeld will shoot it. He's got five. Josh he had 15 on Saturday. Wanted to get in on the party out there too, didn't he? That's two for two for now, Josh, out beyond the yard. One the other night and one tonight. Trevor Morris, the miss, Heitfeld clears. Fargo, <laughs> this goes one on one. And the reverse off the glass. That was shake and bake. 
He shook. Mac Hobson bought it, and then he baked him right on the baseline and took him up. And Jeremy showed some some new stuff down there. Gonzaga on a 14 to 2 run. Hobson, no whistle. That was a wild shot. Well, he was looking to draw the foul from Josh, but Josh stood his ground, kept his feet on the ground, and, and uh, just put his arms up. Hobson was trying to draw the foul instead of make the shot. Gray bumped inside, no whistle there, turnover. Hobson spins on Pargo again, no whistle. Into the corner, Morris way off the three. Here's Gray with downs. <laughs> Austin Day. He had a great game Saturday night, and he's off to a tremendous start again. The steal, the hammer. He's got 11. Gonzaga's up big. Wow! Off to a dominant start at 31 9 over the University of Idaho. We talked in our pregame about Mac Hobson, transfer from Washington State, needing a great game tonight. And he's got two points, but. He's got a lot of turnovers, Craig. Yeah, well, he's going to handle the ball. You know, he's the primary ball handler, so he's going to have it in his hands a lot. So there's going to be a lot of opportunities for turnovers, but really making some bad decisions on his part. I think when you get behind by the score that uh, they're behind, you start forcing things a little bit and trying to do too much. You got to stay within your your game and not try to do too much. And right now, Matt Copson feeling a little frustrated with three turnovers and only one assist. And listen to this. Idaho went 11 straight possessions without a point. Then they scored on four out of five possessions. Since then, it's now eight straight possessions without a point for Idaho. So they're streaky within their own team. They are streaky, but again, I'm going to credit some Zag defense for that. I mean, I they've to. been swarming the basketball. They've been uh, relentless on the pressure. And it's like a sense of urgency for them to play that way and to make Idaho make mistakes. So as, as bad as Idaho is on, on uh, in being streaky, give defense a lot of credit on the Zach's part. That last foul called on Brandon Brown. Gonzaga's into the bonus. Micah Downs leading all scores with 13. And Goodson adds a whole new thing for Gonzaga. I, I mean, that's a little ticky-tack foul. But he's out on the front, pressuring the ball, making it hard for Idaho to get into their offense. It's number nine, Gonzaga, hosting the University of Idaho at McCarthy Athletic Center in Spokane, Washington. I'm Greg Heister, along with Craig Elo. And the Zags off to a 33-9 start. And the steal, Stephen Gray, the two-handed hammer. And it's 35-9. Well, I'm going to give credit where credit is due. Brandon Wiley just threw that ball in front of the students and they were all over him and he was smiling back at him. And when he turned to throw the ball in, Goodson slipped right in there and took the ball away and then gave a nice assist for Stephen Gray who was following on the play. So and credit the steal to the student section on that one. <laughs> There's Trevor Morris. Watson inside. He draws the personal foul. And number 32, Kashif Watson will shoot free throws. Yeah, right in the student and then just a bad angle to make that pass if you make that pass and it gets stolen guess what happens you get slammed on and you see some of the instinctual play by a freshman there oh. Goodson knew right away where he was going with that basketball the minute he took it away yeah you, you watch the uh, NFL right you watch those cornerbacks that are so good that can break on the ball when they see Close the eyes the of the quarterback oh my gosh Goodson has that he broke on that ball as soon as Brandon Wiley bounced past it in, and then boom, he got the ball. Kashif Watson out of Las Vegas, Nevada. I got the feeling that this uh, Gonzaga coaching staff wishes they could just get to the meat of the schedule now tomorrow. This <laughs> team is pumping on all cylinders here in the first half. Yeah, and, but you want to get a foothold on, on what you're doing, and two tune-up games uh, will definitely help you. A near turnover. Great hustle by Stephen Gray, and then the over and back call. So that's a turnover, and it'll go to Idaho here. Nice hustle as well by Brandon Wiley. Number 11. Yeah, you want to pursue the basketball. You don't want to give Stephen Gray just an open shot. Wiley pursued the basketball. 
and tried to win it. And by causing that, uh, Stephen had to go to the ground to get it. And when he did that, he slid right across midline. Terrence Simmons, number three, with it. Jefferson wanting it inside, but Will Foster, seven foot five, says, No way, get it out of here. Goodson with it. I don't think anyone told Terrence Simmons that Will Foster was seven foot five and could reach over you. Pargo misses the open three from the near side corner. Wiley on the move. Over Foster. Nice play there by number 11, Brandon Wiley. That was a super athletic move. Gray at the other end. Heads up. Stephen Gray down hard. Of course, he missed the first five games, I believe, of last season with a broken hand. Actually, first 10 games. And so you know there's a collective sigh of relief on that Zach bench when he gets up. Yeah, because, you know, right now it's not shooting the ball that well, but it's all going to take one or two games for him to make a couple of shots. He'll shoot it here. To get him going. Stephen Gray was such a big part of this program down the stretch a year ago. And, of course, he had that great game in the NCAA tournament that's lost because of what Stephen Curry did. Be sure to stay with us coming up at halftime on FSN. We'll go back to the studio with Angie Metnick, and she's got a very big Mariners announcement. And on KHQ, we'll get you all caught up on your local news with Dan Kleckner and Stephanie Vigil. Well, let's hope that that Mariners announcement includes a lot of wins next season. I agree with you on this. It's just not the same sort of summer when the Mariners aren't playing good baseball. As Bolden knocks down the three ball from the corner. Well, I know for a lot of people that live in Spokane, the Mariners tickets, you know, that's a big weekend for you over there. See the Mariners win some games. And unfortunately, it hasn't happened for them the last couple of years. And it just seems to rain a whole lot more in Seattle when the Mariners aren't winning. Oh, that ball was down and in the basket and came out for Watson. Goodson pushing the ball, slides, and the travel. You know, it's always amazing to me when you see a kid with his caliber of quickness and speed, why they chose basketball. When quickness and speed is obviously made for the football field. I, I, I believe that in Goodson's part, coming out of Houston, Klein, te uh, Texas, it's predominantly a football state. You would think he would have played, but I was talking with Coach Rice, who actually recruited him, and the young man was only about 130 pounds as a freshman. So he might have not had a lot of muscle and size, but he has definitely matured into a nice frame for the young man right now. Thompson now just one of four shooting. Not to say that speed and quickness aren't a big part of basketball. I'm not saying that. But when you get his caliber of speed and quickness, there's a lot of defensive backs in the National Football League that are no bigger than Dimitri Goodson. Marcus Trufant. Sure. Yeah, same size, yeah. And Goodson goes out, replaced by his senior counterpart, Jeremy Pargo, as Micah Downs will be checking in as well. And he'll come in for Stephen Gray. Hey, you met uh, Jeremy's cousin at uh, practice yesterday or shoot around today? Okay. Did you meet him? No. Oh, I did. I met him. He's in from Chicago. <laughs> Were you asking if it was me or you that met him? I thought you met him too. Oh, but, no, uh, I, I just wanted to say how Jeremy keeps it in the family. The cousins even come out to watch young man play. Thirty nine to eleven. Can it get any quieter in here? <laughs> Not much. For Josh Ifield's free throws. I think it would make it more difficult to shoot him. I'd need a little noise. I'd definitely yeah. agree with that one. It's obvious then everybody's watching you. <laughs> yeah. I mean, 6, if there's no noise, eyes. it's pretty obvious they're watching you. Actually, that'd be 12,000 eyes and there's yeah. 6,000 people in here. Yeah. Good math, you know. There's Texas, there's Texas coming into play again. Yeah. Figured that in my head. <laughs> I didn't have to use the calculator. Wiley inside with the left hand. No good. Look at the Sousa flying through. But couldn't handle the rebound. Bolden with it for Gonzaga. And a good decision by Matt. There was nothing brewing up in front of him. And then bam, he starts. Gets the offense into something. 
But there's a tell of the tape right there. 22 rebounds to 10 for Idaho. And this is an Idaho team that actually out-rebounded Michigan State in that loss, 33-31. I would hate to be in a Coach Izzo's practice the next day. I guarantee you they were running some drills on blockouts and getting after the ball. 30-point lead for Gonzaga. Of course, Michigan State shot nearly 60%. They hit 11 threes, so there weren't a lot of misses to be cleaned up on their offensive end. Watson. New clock. Look at Jeremy keeping him on the sideline. And the carry call. We saw it three times on Saturday night, our first of this game. Well, that was a great switch on the sideline by Jeremy Pargo, keeping Brandon Brown on the side after the dribble handoff. He just exploded on the guy, kept him over there, totally took him out of the offense, and then it broke down to a one-on-one, -on -one, and Bolden even steps in and causes the turnover. That's a good call there. That one was pretty obvious. Bolden would have taken that ball away. Downs. Uh-oh. That one rattles through. Downs now with 16. Fuego. Man's hot right now. <laughs> Caliente. He's on, fire. on a 25-2 yeah. run. Hops it in and out. Can't buy a bucket now. It's one of five. That ball was halfway through. Bold and open three in transition. And Gonzaga's just blowing this one wide open. Well, here's the difference in the game from my perspective. Idaho frustrated, 11 points down, 36 points now, one-on-one -on -one offense. Now you see the Zags go down, and you see the ball get moved one, two, three, you know, passes, and that makes better offense. There's the extra pass to Micah Downs in the corner, and bam. Then you go down on the other end, and you got Hobson trying one-on-one, -on -one, messes the shot, Jeremy gets the outlet, penetrates, gets into the paint, kicks it outside to a wide open Matt Bolden, another three ball. So that's the difference right now in the game is Idaho's trying to do it one-on-one, -on -one. Gonzaga's using all of their key parts to, to build the lead up. And this is how bad it is for Idaho right now. Both Micah Downs and Austin Day are outscoring the Idaho Vandals. Micah's Downs got 16. 16, Day's got 11. Well, if it was Austin playing them, they'd be tied, and if it was Micah, he'd be ahead of them. And Idaho's made just four field goals, four of 29. Well, as bad as it may seem, you still got to play the game, right? You just got to go out, settle down, and make sure that you do the right things on the offense and give yourself an opportunity at the basket like that right there. Isinger is blocked by Ira Brown. And you know when you're a head coach, as in the case of Don Verlin, and you come to a program that has struggled for quite a few years, you're bringing 12 new players, you know it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough, and you're going to take your lumps and bruises. And I tell you right now, that was a, a well-executed play, and that's what you got to stay. You got to stay within the confines of your offense and give yourself opportunities to make shots. And it comes back to defense too, Craig. Yeah, you got to get back on the defensive end. You've got to play strong. defense. Yeah. If you're a team that you know that offensively you're not in the same caliber as the team that you're playing against, the only shot you got is to play defense. You better buckle yourself up and, and get in everybody's nose and, and play as hard as you can. And right now, Idaho's not been able to do that. Sorensen missing at the buzzer for Gonzaga. And Gonzaga leads at the half, 47 to 11. Looks pretty pleased, doesn't he? <laughs> they talked about it in practice, and that was to make the extra pass, make simple plays, and your offense will result in what you see right there, 47 points on some good shooting. As a team, Gonzaga hit 18 out of 35 field goal attempts, led by Micah Downs. He was 5 of 6 for 16. And then the defense creating turnovers. 13 by Idaho. And Gonzaga turned them into easy points. And they lead big at the half. 47 to 11. 
A big Mariners announcement coming up on FSN for KHQ. We got a local news update. We'll be right back with more from Spokane. Well, one thing's for sure. The fans in the McCarthy Athletic Center will not care about that scoreboard. They don't care how bad it looks. They will be crazy in here for the final 20 minutes. That's why it's called the crazy kennel. Dogs going everywhere. <laughs> and it's why Gonzaga is 53 and 2. Now in its fifth season in this building, the McCarthy Athletic Center in Spokane, Washington. Gonzaga ranked number nine now. And uh, that's up a spot. It is up a spot, but after this performance, it uh, it's not a they're not overrated. Let's just say that. No, and, and there's a nice look at uh, Coach Verlin, and you know he's got a long row to hoe also, and he's going to have to keep his head up and keep the Vandals, you know, energized because it's it's a second half, and, and if you want to, you can say forget the score, and I'm sure he said that, right? And but you can't forget the score because what it is. You want to get a good production. You want to increase your stats in the second half, and that would be the challenge I would have made to him at halftime. Luciano De Souza led Idaho in scoring in that first half. He made just two field goals. That gives you an idea how bad it was for Idaho. And, and then on the other foot, if you're Coach Few, you're telling your guys, don't let up. If we're going to get take the next step to being a top 10 team the whole year, then we need to impress our will or impose our will on them just like we did in the first half. Don't let your guard down, in other words. Matt Bolden ties up for Sheep Watson. Possession arrow belongs to Gonzaga. Good defense here. Yeah, actually, uh, Watson should have just stayed where he was instead of going into to Matt Bolden and gone straight up with a shot, but he took that step right into Matt and let Matt get a hand on it. And now a whistle away from the ball. And this will be on Idaho. And it will be on Watson, I believe. Is it it? No, nope. number 53, Marvin Jefferson, That's picking up the personal his third. That's a classic post up play for Gonzaga. Heifelt comes out, sets the screen on Pargo on the high screen, throws the ball back in this direction to Austin Day, and then Josh goes right down the middle and sets himself right down in the lane on Jeffries and gets position. Pargo right at Jefferson, and Jefferson picks up number four. And that's two on Idaho in the first 39 seconds of the second half. I don't think Marvin Jefferson's come up against the likes of <laughs> Gonzaga and, and the, all the weapons that come at him. He's trying to help stay on Josh Eifelt, and then a man gets beat. Pargo's going to the rim. He's got to step over and help there. That's pretty much why he's got four fouls this early in the game. Pargo's first free throw attempt and make of this game. Jefferson goes out, number 44, Luis Augusto, a senior out of Brazil at 6'8", 245 pounds, checks in. Fargo, one of two. Thompson pushing the ball right into the lane, throws up the wild one, and draws two free throws. That time, Hobson does a nice job of reading Mac Hobson going down the floor reading the Gonzaga players their backs were all turning with their backs turned he took it right to the paint and I told you in the pregame show that he's a guy that loves to drive to the basket and that's his first option and did a nice job on that possession Idaho took just four free throws in that first half Hobson his first of the game 48 13 Idaho goes to a 1-2-2 two, two half court press, gets a turnover out of it. There's Wiley. Watson, nice finish. Good ball movement. That time the turnover was caused because Zags didn't again another turnover. The ball's pushed up again, and Watson's gonna finish this one. Heitfeld goes down hard, and he picks up the personal foul. So Idaho. 
showing some life here to open up the second 20 minutes. Well, they come out in a 1-2-2 diamond kind of a half-court press, and it's caused two turnovers on the Zags, and that's because the Zags really lazy with the basketball. First half, they really passed the ball, moved it around. The two turnovers came from Matt Bolden on the our side of the floor, you know, lazily making a pass down to the corner, stolen by Hobson, down for a basket. This time, Pargo takes it over into the corner, and instead of attacking the zone, he kind of just dribbles lazily across, allowed the double team, and got another turnover, and now two free throws by Watson. He hit the first one. And again, you see the 1-2-2 one, two, two, making the zags. Now, Jeremy should attack right now. Attack, dribble to the middle. To the middle or throw the ball up the sideline and keep the ball moving. That's how you beat the zone. You want the zone to go one side, overload it, and then quickly move the ball to the other side. You usually get an open shot. There's a good example right there. Day misses. He didn't miss many in that first half. Five of nine. Now for the game, Watson finishes. How about Watson getting out, putting his track shoes on, getting a couple of fast breaks, a couple of baskets. So Idaho scored just 11 points in the first 20 minutes. They've got eight here, and we're not even two minutes into the second half. So Don Verlin has to be happy about how his Vandals have come out of the locker room. Gonzaga is still up big, but the Vandals are fighting. 48-19 our score. Mark Few beginning his 10th season as the head coach at Gonzaga. And this graphic is going to give you an idea of how successful he's been here. Already he's number five after 10 seasons as his 10th season begins at 237 wins. You can see who's in front of him. Jerry Tarkanian, Danny Crum. Those two are going to go down in the before December's over with only Everett Case and Roy Williams in front of them. Pretty amazing, Craig. It's absolutely astronomical what he's done in 10 seasons and, you know, been at GU over 20 total years as an assistant and now 10 as a head coach. So he's been here a long, long time. Stephen Gray, the three ball. And that might get Stephen going. That one came off his hand really nicely. One of four now behind the arc. Well, I got to tell you, every coach will tell you coming out of halftime, the first three minutes are probably the most important part of the game. You want to establish and set the tone for the rest of the game. Idaho has beaten Gonzaga in the first couple of minutes here. And Gonzaga's got to respond with some tough defense and good offense. Option misses. And a foul called on Josh Heitfeld. So Josh picks up two quick ones here in the second half after playing foul free in the first half. And when you build up a comfortable lead, it, it can't help but get a little complacent, right? I mean, that's just a natural human instinct in, in all of us in sports that uh, go through that. But if it happens, you want to come out of it as quickly as you can. And hopefully that shot on the offensive end by Stephen Gray will do that. What a bucket by Mac Hobson. Both Day and Heitfeld had opportunities to block that shot. And Hobson put it up out of their reach. Yeah, it, it's kind of deceiving on his quickness and just gets into the paint against Austin Day and gets his body closer to the rim. And Austin wasn't good enough or long enough to uh, block the shot. And Heitfeld uh, was out of position too. And Hobson throws it in off the backboard for a three-point play. And with the three-point play, Idaho now has already equaled their first half point total here in the second half. Less than three minutes in. That's a very good sign for him, don't you think? Hey, this world's about progress, right? Not it, perfection. It is. Heitfeld. Nice high-low game from Austin Day to Josh Heitfeld. And again, another bread-and-butter play for Gonzaga is right there, what you just saw, high-low. And Josh Heitfeld doing a nice job of sealing and getting that pass down from uh, Austin at the high post. Simmons open three and he bangs that through so Idaho looking much good much better on the offensive end as Stephen Gray makes him pay at the other end should point out it wasn't a three on this end by Simmons just a two he was inside the line okay and then uh, what a great job by Jeremy Pargo they work on this in practice almost every day to warm up with 
push the ball ahead. If someone's up ahead of you, give it to him. Make the defense react to it. Golden with a deflection. Hargo runs it down. There's Heitfeld. Well, Augusto was hoping for the foul, and Heitfeld just deposited it. Augusto's got to stay on his feet. If you're going to challenge Josh Heitfeld, I'd rather challenge him on my feet than on my back. That kind of epitomizes the flop. <laughs> Watson, kick out, Wiley, jumper, no good. Fargo with a rebound. Austin Day calling for it on the post. Heitfeld shoots the three off the front of the rim. It'll stay with Gonzaga when we come back. Idaho playing much better here in the second half. But Josh Heitfeld starting to get it going. He's got 12 with the easy two. 15-18 to play. 15 18 to play. Number nine, Gonzaga is still with a large lead over the University of Idaho. Greg Heister and Craig Elo. And let's take a look at Craig's eggs. You like that, don't you? All right, here we go. He established <laughs> the inside out game. They've done that. 22 points in the paint led by Josh Heifelt. And it's not rocket science. When you go inside, it opens up the perimeter game. And there's 44% on the three point shooting tonight. Uh, of 818 and then the solid D for 40. Hey, I'm gonna have to say they're slacking off here in the second half. I'm not real impressed with the defense coming out, and then the offensive efficiency is definitely there. It's only seven turnovers and 53% from the field. That means every possession down the floor, they're getting good shots. Foul called here on Watson. That's three on him. Yeah, Last like three minutes and 22 seconds, Idaho has scored 13 points. I should have said they're napping on the job right now to start the second half on defense. That's three team fouls here on Idaho. Micah Downs missed everything. Simmons open, rattled out. Day and Gray. And Downs had an opportunity at that rebound, and they lose it. You know, it's not a bad shot by Terrence Simmons. He's a 50% three-point shooter right now with only two games. But I tell you what, if there's any way to get back in this ball game, you got to knock down a few of those pretty quickly. And Terrence Simmons being one of the better shooters from three-point land for Idaho, he has the green light to shoot that. Well, they had just 24 attempts in that first half, so I'm sure Coach Verlin just wants him to get the ball up to the rim. Get something up there. And there's that anticipation that I was talking about on the defensive end. You know, you love guys that anticipate well, and Jeremy Pargo does it as well as anyone. Saw that pass. There's another great anticipation by Stephen Gray. Didn't get that one, but you like the way that they go after the, the angles of the passes, and they can read it and, and try to get a hand or deflect it or steal it. There's a Gusto shot blocked by Ira Brown. Wow, and Brown comes flying through the frame. It is something special. And again, that's defense. He came from the offside. The ball went over the top. They were fronting the post. Ira was there to help and block a Gusto shot. De Souza ties up Day. Hops and drives. Missed the lay in. Simmons, another three from the wing. That one's short. And Ira Brown with another rebound. DeSouza took it away. Actually deflected it. And Brandon Brown snagged it out of the air. Well, you like the fight in the Vandals. You like what you see coming out in the second half. They didn't drop their heads and go away. I think when you only put up 11 points, you have to go to the locker room and say, look, let's clear the scoreboard. Let's try to win the second half. Exactly. And that's the only thing you can say when you're down that many points. And there was a nice job by Brandon Brown penetrating and getting his own to collapse, but uh, Luciana de uh, Souza went the wrong way. He came out on top expecting the pass. He should have drifted down into the corner in uh, Brown's vision. And in case you're wondering, that's Heitfeld with a tip jam off the missed three by Stephen Gray. Right now, Idaho is winning the second half. They've scored 13. Gonzaga has scored 12. So it's a tight ball game in the second half. It's uh, it's exactly what you want your players to play. You don't want them to play the scoreboard. 
You want them to play a, a second half and give you a good 20 minutes and learn from it. Brown drives. Ira Brown with a block. He must have moved his feet because he sure seemed like he was there in time. But nonetheless, he picks up the personal foul. That's his first and five on Gonzaga with 13.02 to play. That was Brown on Brown. Brown going at Brown. Brown going to the free throw line. Brandon Brown out of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Here's the follow up. Nice shot by Steven, just a little short, but look at Josh Heifel crash the boards and tuck it home. And then that must have hurt. Did you see his reaction on that? Yeah. Ah! <laughs> no, that's that's the call. I like what I did. There you go, straight up. That's where you beat the press, straight up the floor on the sideline. Dimitri Goodson back in there for Gonzaga. Here's the feed to Heitfeld. They Sousa with a foul. Heitfeld got it back, but the flush coming after the whistle. So De Sousa picks up his first personal. That's four on Idaho. I like DeSousa's energy. I like what he brings to the game. A lot of South Americans playing in the NBA right now. They have a lot of energy. Young man from Brazil has that same energy that some of those guys play with in the NBA. Heitfeld not having his best game from the free throw line. He's one of five. 14 points, six of nine shooting. A couple of guys I was talking about, one's in Houston. And I have a tough time out there named Luis Ciolo Scola. And then uh, there's a Vera Hazo in Cleveland, so that's tough. <laughs> Vera Hazo, <laughs> right? Sorry. So, got to work on my Spanish. No, you don't, Elo. It's yeah. always the attempt with you that's the special part of it. Thank you. Wiley, here's Morris. De Sousa from the corner. Yeah. Boys, hit three of those in this game. At six foot seven, he's got a big time shot, Craig. He really does. I like the lift. I like uh, how he gets his feet up and, and a good jump shot. You know, never has been short on his shots. Loose ball, kicked around. Downs, Hobson, and Goodson. Possession arrow goes to Idaho. No, they say they get a timeout. So they declare possession to Hobson and then say he got a timeout. Well, I tell you again, I like what I've seen out of Hobson. He, he could have dug, you know, put his head down and said where the score is, but look at that. He's on the floor trying to get the ball and win it for the Vandals. Luciano de Sousa. Sounds like an opera singer. He's three for four from behind the arc. All of his points coming from over there. He's got nine points, and they're almost from the same spot. The first two, anyways. Yeah, I tell you again, look at the follow through. He's got good form on it. His feet are set. He's got good lift. And uh, and he's got the hair for flair. I'm telling you, those guys from South America, they all of them have that. They all have that. Young man from. Help me with this one too. Mateo, Mateo Brazil. Brazil. Mateo Brazil. And even uh, some students in the. That guy's from Phoenix. He told me <laughs> he was from Phoenix. <laughs> yeah. Idaho uh, outscoring Gonzaga 17 to 13 now in the second half with possession. Brown lost the handle. Tried to do too much. Gray, Gonzaga with the numbers. De Souza missed the block. Goodson got it back. Got it to Gray. A little jumper from the baseline is good. Effort play on Gonzaga's part. Goodson going down on the missed shot and getting the rebound and finding Steven for a mid range jumper. Eleven thirty to play. Wiley driving left hand left it short height felt rebound boy a hundred dollar move but a nickel finish <laughs> he got by uh, everybody on the zags that time but just didn't finish height felt that's off the front of the rim gray with a rebound missed that tip back no good brown tip back no good 
Got it back for a third time. And a foul called inside on Stephen Gray. We'll deal with it when we come back, but the Zag bench getting it done tonight for Mark Few. Ira Brown, the steal. This is Stephen Gray. And there's Goodson. 62 28. Much more difficult now for Gonzaga as we look beyond tonight's game. The Old Spice Classic beginning at uh, the 27th of November. They draw Oklahoma State to start, but then look who they play in the second round. Yeah, they can either draw Michigan State or Maryland. I'm going to assume Michigan will beat Maryland. Maryland's a good team, though, too. And then uh, that winner can go to the championship game, and that'll be a heck of a tournament down there in Orlando. I hope they don't go to Disney World. I hope they stay in there and uh, play their games because that's going to be some fun down there. And you see there Tennessee also in that tournament. So Gonzaga has an opportunity. It could work out where they play Tennessee twice this season. The ball's already on the schedule later in December. Well, Oklahoma State, a uh, whole new era down there. Also, the Suttons are gone. Travis Ford is in. They got a young man, Byron Eaton, that plays good defense. So not going to be an easy game for the Zags that first one. So they got to take care of business in that first one so they can get to that second one. Micah Downs looking for the foul there on the miss. Didn't get the call. As we talk more about uh, Oklahoma State, Gonzaga's first matchup on the 27th. New coach there as well, but uh, I tell you, they've got a senior guard, a really nice player in Brian Eaton. Well, if you got a guy that can pressure the basketball 94 feet and come up with steals, uh, just making guys turn it over, you know, that's the kind of guy you want, and that's what Brian uh, Eaton is. He can do that for you. Gonzaga's hit just two of their last 11 field goals, so their offense going a little cold as Dimitri Goodson heats it up a little. With How the big step that? right down the middle. The big step got himself under control. Instead of going into the defender who was trying to draw the charge, he goes straight up and avoids the contact. And floats it in with the right hand. Watson bangs into Bolden. Missed the shot off of Idaho so we'll take another look at Dimitri Goodson look at this little change crossover and then boom gets under control didn't go quite straight up but up far enough to avoid the contact and there was contact so explain to us why that's not a foul Craig uh, Lucy you got some explaining to do I don't know that's um, Louis was there he was right there but I think he fell before the contact came is that, does that sound reasonable? You're talking about Luciana de Souza? Yeah. Is that who you're calling Lucy? Yeah, you know Ricky Ricardo, you know that show? <laughs> Lucy! Wow. You got some explaining to do. Uh, that's going back, Elo. Fargo, just inside the three point line, left it short. Hobson with the rebound. And if you're wondering about Jeremy, he's got five points, but eight assists. So and the travel. I'm telling you, the, the importance of Jeremy Pargo, we, we said earlier in those 14 games they played against uh, NCAA tournament teams last year, he stepped up big and had almost 16 points a game. He doesn't have to score for this team to win. And I think uh, that's part of his maturity as well, Craig, because how many kids coming to a major Division One college basketball program are ever going to want to be told, look, we don't need you for your offense. Just get the ball to the scorers. And he's handled he's handling that really well. He learned a lot this summer in these NBA pre camp uh, draft camps. Yeah, I where totally they told him, that. look, you want to get to the NBA, show us that you can distribute the ball and make good decisions. Yeah, and score when when you're left open. And uh, Jeremy does a nice job of that. And I tell you, he, if you talk to him, he, he loves getting assists. He loves setting his teammates up. Frankly, I think last year, too, there were times when this Gonzaga offense would go stagnant. You know, they were kind of out of rhythm. And Jeremy had to score. He felt as though he had to score. This team doesn't appear to have that in them this year. They seem to be a lot more mature, the guard. Yeah, I think, and that's a great possession right there. I thought good penetration by uh, Meach getting into the paint. And then the shooter coming available for him, Matt Bolden. They missed the shot, but now they got the offensive rebound for another one. But those are the kind of things you want your point guard to do. Hit the gaps, draw the defense, and distribute the ball. Oh, wow. That's, uh, it doesn't get any easier than that right there. 
Bolden able just to chest pass to Austin Day, who simply turns around with no defender and drops it through. Well, you got to know that the scouting report for Idaho said wherever Day goes, by gosh, let's have a guy on it. I mean, he's he's a, a scorer. And Austin's the type of guy, a type of player, I think, that you're going to have to start denying the pass because once he gets it, he's scoring 66 30. Chip at Michigan State in 1979. Don Munson got the University of Idaho to the NC2A tournament. A couple of legends living in the city of Spokane. And Don Verlin will hope to do that uh, down the road for this Vandals basketball program. I was actually at Washington State when Coach Monson was at Idaho and the two years I was there his teams beat me both years and uh, every day I see him uh, he reminds me of that. <laughs> <laughs> I bet he wishes he had you though. Uh, he had a great team Brian Kellerman Gordy a I believe Kenny Owens Bill Hobson was on that team that's Max uh, father Kelvin Smith uh, guy from Pasco I believe so he had some homegrown boys Kellerman was from the Tri Cities. Uh, he got it done down there at Idaho. They were in the top 20 uh, both years. I was at Washington State Matt Bolden gets the lead back to 38 Bolden now with eight points on three of five shooting Knocked away by Bolden Jefferson got it back he shoots Missed it Bolden with the rebound Matt Bolden doing everything now and these two possessions when the post catches it on the post there's one thing you should do with the ball and, and Marvin Jefferson didn't do it he should just turn and look and see if he can make a move or if you take a dribble take a dribble into the lane if you take a dribble where you're standing you bring the little guy into the play and that was Matt Bolden when you take the dribble like that Matt Bolden was able to slap it away from him so you got to go somewhere with your dribble if you catch it on the post you just can't dribble it or the little guy comes in and knocks it away from you. I guess Matt's not that little. I shouldn't call him little. <laughs> He's 6'5. Watson. Shot short. Will Foster on the floor for Gonzaga. Here's Gray driving the baseline. Kick out to Bolden. The drives to the middle. Looking for Will Foster. And Bolden draws the personal foul. This is on number 21, Drew Isinger. Well, this is an important part of the game for Gonzaga right now. The last five or 557, take care of the basketball. Don't put up quick shots and run some offense and see if you can get some rhythm and some timing down like we've talked about before. Uh, I think that was great discipline on Matt's part uh, on the, when he caught the ball in the wing. He had an open shot, but chose to dribble in and penetrate and try to get something else. Day with the rebound, lost it out of bounds. And it's Idaho basketball. Well, give the Vandals a lot of credit, Craig. They could have just folded up the tent and walked out of here after that first 20 minutes, but hey. they battled hard. 11 points at halftime. Yeah, I mean, you could you could fold up the tents and go home. Just make sure the bus was started and just head right out of here. But they came out and they really showed some uh, grit here. I like it. I like what. Uh, uh, they've done in the second half. They've gotten a little more patient on the offensive end and taken better shots. And it's been a, a result of, you know, some points put on the board for them. And a carry called on Jeremy Pargo. I think Jeremy did that on purpose. He was trying to see if the officials were ready to call it. <laughs> no, he. Jeremy. You don't hardly ever see him do that. His turnovers are, are never like what you just saw. But look at the start of the season for Jeremy Pargo. 18 assists on three turnovers. That's odd. Oh, man. Here's Goodson with a steal. Nice Lost pass. the handle. Damn! Oh! They Sousa doing a great job to get back defensively because Austin Day was going to hammer that like he's never hammered one. Now, see, I love that play no quit in the Seuss. look at that Boom. Boom. you know if you look at the scoreboard he doesn't have to make that play but then Austin Day drops into three and Simmons was talking to him and Austin just said and now a technical foul called on Austin Day Austin! 
Simmons and Day were chirping after Austin hit this shot. <laughs> well, if there's one thing Austin Day can learn uh, in the maturation process and the maturity process is that you know, let your game speak for yourself. You know, you don't have to uh, say anything or do anything. Just run back after you make a jump shot. I think he was a little probably flustered from the, the block uh, dunk attempt. Now he's got some explaining to do to Coach Few. Yeah, Mark Few was asking him what was happening or what happened. But you'll see that young man grow as uh, the season goes on. He, he'll let his game speak for himself because that's what uh, the real backup is, is, is uh, you know, how you play the game. It's not how you talk the game. It's how you play it. And Austin's got the play. And he's such a talented player. A lot of that stuff that he gets involved in is just wasted energy, Greg. It's good theater. Let me don't, don't get me wrong. It's good theater, good I, drama. I agree it's great with for you. Television. It, and I tell you, Austin Day is one of the, my favorites already in the history of this program. He is a great, great guy to hang out with and to know. Yeah, he wants to please everybody. Yep, he's a good. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Dimitri Goodson just trying to get in front of the basketball and he picks up the personal foul. Well, when you're beat in the backcourt, the ball went way back. Dimitri was trying to go for the steal. He didn't get the steal. So now he's trying to run and pick a spot to get in front of Hobson. Hobson keeps the arm out, what you want him to do to protect the basketball. Meech is just trying to figure out a spot in front of him to get to him. I guess there was too much contact in the backcourt for that. Well, but Hobson had the arm bar out there kind of pushing him away and Dimitri just trying to get out in front of that arm. He's asking for a double foul. <laughs> he yeah. wants the arm bar call. Absolutely. I mean, I think I think it's a valid point, even though we're you know, we're grasping at stuff here and we've got almost a 40 point lead for Gonzaga. Well, it's always the view of the official and I, you know, the official was on the offside, so maybe he didn't see the arm bar. But you know, you teach that to a 12 year old, sure. keep that arm out there to protect the basketball. Sure. Eight on the shot clock as Gray drives to the free throw line, hangs and hits. That's something you want to see Stephen Gray do a lot more of. Uh, not settle for just a jumper out around the three point line. You sure you're a great three point shooter, but if you can't put the ball on the floor, one, two hard dribbles and pull up. Boy, you're going to start getting guarded out there along the three point line and get no opportunities. Gonzaga now with four players in double figures as Watson gets a great shot there. Ira Brown looked as though he actually got a hand on that shot. And Watson's strong enough to get the ball through the hoop. Boulder, three ball, rattled out. Hey, somehow came up with the rebound. There's Will Foster. Oh, that's an offensive foul. It's all right. We'll get aggressive on your move. I like that. I don't think he quite had to drop the shoulder to get his move off. He could have just turned and shot on the guy, but you like I what you just was, saw in Will Foster. There was shoulder, hip, and elbow in that one. <laughs> Nighttime seatbelt. 73 36 our score. Well, the Gonzaga Bulldogs just keep on reloading, and they announced the signing of two new recruits with letter of intents for the 09 and 2010 season. Wednesday, the first day to sign those letters, the Bulldogs signed 6'8 center forward Sam Dower from Osseo, Minnesota High School. And on Thursday, they signed 6'5, 185 pound wingman Mangisto or Manny Arop. The A is silent, I'm being told. Manny Rop. Rop, yeah. One is a left handed post player, the other one is a really athletic wing. You need to learn your Su Sudanese. Sudanese, I guess I, yes. I need to go back to school for that. Yeah. Manute Bowl Rop. Those kind what? of things. Manute, Manute Bowl Rop? Well, Manute Bowl's from Sudan. Sure. Manny's from Sudan. I see. So we're starting you out really elementary. Oh, okay. I'm just trying to stay one. One page ahead of you, Evo. <laughs> it is tough. 
And uh, for those watching on KHQ, the Mariners have a new manager, Craig. I like that. Yeah, the bench coach of the uh, Oakland Athletics, Don Wakamatsu. Don Wakamatsu. I'm sure uh, John Fritz and Derek Dice will have more on that coming up tonight on KHQ Local News at 11. But the Mariners new era have begun. Let's hope he can bring in some really nice free agents. Make some good decisions to spend some money and get that franchise going back in the right direction. That's right. You got a great facility over there. That Safeco Field is an awesome place play. to watch uh, baseball. You got a great player in Ichiro. So let's build that up and get that all done over there for the man. We ought to let you do some PR for him. <laughs> Micah Downs checks out for Gonzaga. 18 points, four rebounds. Thousand five. And now we've got an official's timeout. Three thirteen to play. And Idaho will have to. Okay, you know what happened there. Let me explain to you. Oh, okay. I can't wait for this. Three thirteen. Right. Mac never picked. Hobson never picked the ball up. The shot clock started. Oh, so but the four game seconds. The clock it. didn't. But you can't start any clock until, until the, the ball, game clock starts. Or no, until the ball is touched. Right. But so Mac let it roll all the way. But the right. shot clock was already down to thirty seconds, and that's why the official. Right. And the game clock won't start till he touches it. Touches it. So when the game clock starts, that's when the shot, shot clock, clock begins. Shit. Right. But right. it all starts with. Mac grabbing the ball who was letting it go roll up on the, the floor. Well, you never know. 317 to play. Well, I get to tell you back now they're 317. It was 313. So the shot clock and the clock started even without Mac touching the ball, which is not good. <laughs> so they went over and straightened out. I get you. The shot, uh, the scorekeeper. Well, Watson didn't have a prayer. He had Ira Brown in there and Will Foster. And he draws the personal foul. And Watson has scored all of his 10 points here in the second half. So when you're looking for things to build on for the University of Idaho, Kashif Watson is one of them. He's at the line. Yeah, you got a couple early baskets in the press. Uh, got the turnovers, filled the lane. You always want to see your guys run the floor hard. Kashif Watson does that for uh, Coach Berlin. Averaging 12 and a half points a game, five rebounds. This free throw will get him to his average. And we get to the three minute mark. Andrew Sorensen, number 11, in there for Gonzaga. Along with number four, Chris Pontarola Ma, got a Quincy Washington. Will Foster and Ira Brown round out the. Five zags on the floor. Here's Goodson, the freshman for three. That's long. Hobson with the rebound. Hounded by Goodson. Hobson takes it right to the rim, gets the roll. And Goodson. Better serve to bring it back out as Sorensen tried to get it to Ira Brown. Too hard, too high. So take a look at the bench for Gonzaga. Star studded bench there. And the three guys in the shirts uh, Grant Gibbs, freshman, nursing a right shoulder. Robert Sakri has got a bad foot, stress fracture in his uh, foot. And Andy Poling will be red shirting this year for the Zags. Nice job by Dimitri Goodson, but there's Robert Sakri in the middle. And Rob will be back to play in that uh, Orlando tournament. At least that's what he's telling me now. You don't know if the coaching staff will be allowing him to get minutes yet because we don't know where he is in his development and being physically able to play. He's missed a lot of time. Is the point? Now is that the trainer's call? Or well, I think Robert's it'll be call? it'll be Coach Fuse's call when he gets in the game. But uh, I think. But I think he's, he has he'll to be released by the. Yeah, he'll be eligible to play. I'm being told uh, when they get down to Orlando on the 27th of November. So he's all the way back. He's working out at practice. As Andrew Sorensen hits the three ball from the corner. That young man's got four career field goals. All from behind the arc. All from behind the arc. He had two on Saturday night. 
one last year. And you can tell he's a very popular walk on here at Gonzaga. As they often are at any school. Hobson answers with the three. And we near the one minute mark. Here's Chris Pontarola Mog, number four with it. And this place will go crazy if Chris scores. Out of Quincy Washington. Goodson driving to the middle. What a teardrop. I tell you, if I'm a point guard, that's the one ability that I work on. That's the shot I want in my arsenal. The runner. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you. If you put a big box right underneath the free throw line, that I would call that a penetration box. If you can get to that box and get up a shot in that area, you got a good chance of making it all the time. You don't want to go too far because you'll meet the big guy down there, right? So if you can stop in that little box, if you just have an imaginary box right where the WCC is right below the free throw line and hit that every time and come up with a little soft floater like you just called a teardrop. That is a huge piece of uh, weapon for you as a point guard. Well, you seem to <laughs> anticipate that fast. He had that one. Luckily, Hobson had enough uh, enough to keep the ball. Five on the shot clock, and Hobson bangs in the three. <laughs> and it's 19 now for Hobson on five of 12 shooting. He's seven of seven from the free throw line, and this is going to do it. So Gonzaga's two and zero. Oh. And now they set their sights on Oklahoma State. As the coaches greet and meet. Well, as Gonzaga now, are, are they there, Craig? Are they there? Are they ready to go into this very difficult non-conference schedule that is in front of them? Well, uh, from what I've seen, this was a, a pretty good game defensively for them. A full 40 minutes is what I asked for. I thought they had a little slack uh, or a, a let down right coming out of half. But uh, yeah, it, it, defensively, it's about as good as I've ever seen them play. And I tell you, offensively, you don't have to worry about them at all. I think they got all the weapons and they got they can go inside, they can go outside. They can put the press on you. They can keep, make you turn, turn the ball over and turn those into points. So I, I think uh, right now they have fine tuned themselves to go in to that old spice tournament down in Orlando. The Sags with four players and double figures. Height felt great, downs and day. I'm Heister, he's Elo. Good night from Spokane. Gonzaga wins it 80 to 46.